Hey guys, Jake Madison, Rick Madison Racing here. Um, I'm here at the Northeast Motorsports Museum. I'm here with racing legend Dick Bergren, and I'm here to ask him a few questions about the, uh, the museum. So, Mr. Bergren. Yes. <laughs> what inspired you to build this museum? Well, what inspired me was coming here about 20 or more years ago to one of the vintage celebrations. And a guy that was involved in it named Vic Urardi came to me and he said, Dick, we're losing our history. I said, what are you talking about? And he said, our history, it's going away. He says, people die, they've got all these scrapbooks full of pictures of racing. And they, when they die, their family doesn't know what to do with them, so they throw the scrapbooks away. People are selling the cars off into private collections, so nobody's ever going to see them again. Sometimes they just go to a junkyard and get caught up. We need a museum. And you're the guy to get it built. <laughs> well, I suspect now that I've been through all this that he did the same speech to probably everybody that was at that event <laughs> and I was the guy that was silly enough to raise my hand. I care about the history of, of automobile racing and motorcycle racing here in New England. Uh, it, it's, been, it's really been my life. It took me to a national stage where I was fortunate enough to work television and radio and work for a bunch of auto racing magazines. Kind of needed to give back and this is a way in which to do it. Try to save the history of motorsports here in New England. Awesome. Did it turn out as you imagined? No, it didn't turn out as I imagined at all. Uh, <laughs> there were ideas of what this place was going to look like but it changed repeatedly during the construction project. Originally, this was going to be one floor of a new building that was going to be built here at New Hampshire Motor Speedway. We were going to have the bottom floor. Well, Bruton Smith decided not to build the building and we couldn't raise enough money for our portion of it anyway, so that went away. Then we were going to build it like uh, the Legends building that's here. And then I went to Bentley Warren's one day and saw the building that he was putting up at his place for his own private museum. And that building so impressed me that I called the same company that built it and said, would you build one similar to that for us? And that is what we have here. This is a clone of Bentley Warren's building. And it's not at all what we thought we were going to have. As far as what's on the floor, who knew what was going to be on the floor? When we started this, we thought, oh my gosh, Boy, I sure hope we can get enough cars to fill it. We better make this a really small building because, you know, how many cars are we going to get? By the time we were close to being ready to open, we had offers of more cars, more motorcycles, more trophies, helmets, and all the rest of it than we could possibly accommodate. So that was a bit of a surprise, too. So there have been surprises all along. They really have. Hmm. <laughs> How many cars are on exhibit here at the museum? Right now we have 32 cars and 6 motorcycles, uh, but we have room, uh, hopefully, uh, to be able to put some more on the floor. We're, we're really tight on space and we're trying to do events in addition to this being a place where people can see the cars and the motorcycles and the trophies and the helmets and the memorabilia. We want to have people want to come here and be able to come here uh, and, and enjoy events. So, um, we don't have enough room. I'd like to see more room, but we get room and we just fill it right up with cars. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, once NASCAR credentialing is not here, uh, we tend to average somewhere between 30 and 35 cars on the floor. That's a, that's a good mix. Uh, and Gil Corain, who you just met, uh, is the guy who designed the way all this stuff is. And what he wanted to have happen is the garage look should not be the museum look. You go into a garage and all the cars are parked side by side, it's boring. <laughs> He's right, it's boring. <laughs> so he, he stood there and he said, okay, move this one here, move that one there, move one somewhere else. And the fact that we've got such a variety of cars and motorcycles here, every kind of surface, every kind of racing is represented here. And they're all thrown together carefully thrown together, but they're all thrown together, so you have to walk around this stuff to see anything. You can't just breeze down a single line of vehicles and then 10 minutes later walk out and, and think, well, I've seen it all. Here, this is very different than most car museums. Most car museums, they've got fences around the cars. You can't get in, you can't really see them. These, if you want to lay on your back and look up underneath George Summers' race car out there to see how the suspension is, you can do that. You, gotta walk, you want to walk all the way around? You can do that. 
Most museums, you see the nose of the car, and that's it. So we're different. Mm -hmm. Did you drive any of the cars that are in here? I did. Actually, two of the cars that are on the floor right now, I drove. Uh, one of them is the rear engine super modified. That's the one where the engine's in the car backwards, so they could get more weight on the left rear wheel. Uh, the other car that I drove uh, is the Spirit of 76 Super Modified. Uh, I didn't win in either one of those. Uh, the cars that I won in, uh, there's one of them that's been saved, the stock car has been saved, and uh, the sprint car that I won the majority of the races in my career is sitting in another museum in Maine, believe it or not, not here. Right. <laughs> is there any particular memories connected to any of the other cars? Well, I've seen a lot of these cars actually race. Uh, the Bodine car, which was the first one that was on the floor, uh, that won 55 feature events in a single year. Uh, I watched that car win several of those 55 uh, events that year. In fact, some of the photos that are on the wall of that car uh, I took back in 1978 uh, when that record was set. Mm. Uh, so I saw that one race, and of course, the Spirit of 76. Uh, I saw other people drive that as well as driving it myself. Uh, and there's probably a couple of others here, but I'm, I'm just sort of looking around to figure out. Oh, Eddie, Eddie McDonald's car, uh, the Pro Stock, uh, I've seen that one race. Uh, and definitely Ali Silver's car, that's super modified. Ernie Gahan's car that won the 1966 NASCAR championship, I saw that one race. So I've probably seen a quarter of the cars that are on the floor race. So seeing this, seeing some of these cars gave me some real nostalgia. Yeah, uh, seeing the cars did, but the photographs too. Uh, we've had all sorts of people walk in here with cardboard boxes filled with programs and photos and that kind of thing. I go through that and it just takes me right back on memory lane uh, where I can remember uh, seeing people, some of whom aren't even with us anymore, uh, race. So yeah, there's a lot of nostalgia here for anybody that comes to see the museum uh, or even for those of us who work here. Uh, there's a lot of memories that come bubbling up by being around this place. <laughs> what race are you most excited for this weekend? Oh, the Modifieds. That's the Modifieds, <laughs> hands down. The Modifieds are going to be awesome. That's what I thought it was going to be. Because they're <laughs> always awesome here at New Hampshire. I think that's the best division here. Those cars just seem so well suited uh, for this speedway. Plus, we've got a very tight points race uh, in the Modified division. Uh, and. Uh, you know, the guy that's leading the points isn't even going to be here this weekend. Ryan Priest is off racing an Xfinity car uh, in, I think, Kentucky. I'm pretty sure that's where he is this weekend. So, uh, the championship's at stake. Uh, they've got the, the glue put back down on the racetrack. And the last time those modifieds ran here with that glue, at one point, they came off turn two, five wide. And I've <laughs> never seen that here. And I think we're going to see that here on Saturday. It's going to be an awesome race. Oh, it's going to be a wonderful race. It really is. The only, the only sad part of it is we don't have Teddy Christopher to cheer for. Uh, with Teddy's passing uh, last weekend, uh, it, it's just it's not going to be the same. Not going to be the same at all to be watching a modified race here and, and not seeing him. But uh, he want the race to go on. He wouldn't want us to be sad. He wouldn't want a tear to be shed. He'd want us to be cheering for the good guy and booing the bad one. <laughs> Sometimes he was the good guy, sometimes he was the bad guy. So this is a really exciting and busy weekend for New Hampshire Motor Speedway. I want to thank Dick Bergen for taking the time to talk about the museum today. And race fans, if you want to learn more about the Northeast Motorsports Museum, you can go to www.nemsmuseum.com.